Hi everyone, my name is Kristen and I'm the dietitian here at Bariatric and Metabolic Specialists. If you're looking for the video you're supposed to watch before your nutrition appointment, you've come to the right place. We'll cover a lot of things today such as going over some nutrition basics to start building habits before surgery as well as what you'll be expected to do after surgery. If you haven't already, you'll get a nutrition packet with all of this information in it, it looks like this. So if you want, you can follow along. So let's talk about healthy eating prior to surgery. This is gonna start building habits that will set us up for success after surgery and for long-term. This is USDA's MyPlate. It's a great visual for picking out meals. It'll give you an overall balanced diet that won't be high in and it's really easy to commit. So one thing to keep in mind is that most dinner plates are too large. Our bowl that we use, our brains tell us to fill up the whole thing. And most of the time we won't stop until it's empty. So we want to work from a nine inch salad plate. This is something that you can invest in now as a smaller plate is what we'll also recommend using after surgery. So how do we build our plate? A quarter of your plate should be protein. This is one of the three macronutrients and protein is a word you're going to be hearing a lot. It's very important before and after surgery as we really wanna make sure that we're maintaining our lean muscle mass as much as possible while we're losing weight. So that is one of the functions of protein as well as it fights inflammation, it helps with healing, and it keeps us full longer. So when we're choosing our protein sources, we want to try to choose lean sources like loin or round cuts or skinless poultry instead of fried. And so we want to try to make a goal of about 70 to 80 grams a day. Everyone's different and we can talk about that during your appointment. But if you can remember a deck of cards is about three ounces of meat, chicken and fish. And that is about 20 grams of protein. So if you can aim for about a deck of cards for each meal, you'll be getting 20 grams of protein each meal. And spreading it out throughout the day instead of having it all in one meal for your needs is going to be absorbed better. So let's talk about carbohydrates. This should be about a quarter of our plate and carbohydrates is another macronutrient. So some examples are grains, starchy vegetables, beans, and lentils, and carbs are a great fuel source. Our body absorbs them the quickest. Um, so we just wanna be smart about our carb choices. We don't wanna have no carbs. One thing to do to be smart about our carb choices is making half of our grain sources whole grains and whole grains has a lot of fiber. So the type of fiber that's in whole grains is soluble fiber and soluble fiber helps excrete cholesterol through our stools so we don't absorb it as much as well as helps with bowel regularity and it also is great for our health to have healthy gut bacteria. We want to limit refined carbohydrates with simple sugars like pastries, donuts, etc. And uh, one thing to also consider is that there's a lot of products out there that have hidden sugars. So words to watch on the ingredient list besides sugar are brown sugar, honey, syrup, um, high fructose corn syrup, dextrose, maltose, sucrose, and glucose. Those are all other names for sugar. And you can pretty much get sugar in most condiments like ketchup or barbecue sauce um, and things like that. So those are things that we want to start switching over to sugar-free options. So here are some examples of 
whole grain foods um, like brown rice, oatmeal, quinoa, um, and whole wheat bread, things like that. Um, and then these are other healthy starches um, like our starchy vegetables such as corn, peas, potatoes, and beans. Now we'll talk about the remaining half of our plate. So we want to make this up of fruits and vegetables with vegetables being the larger half. One serving size of vegetables is a cup or half a cup of cooked vegetables, whereas a serving size of fruit is about the size of a tennis ball. So some examples of high fiber non-starchy vegetables are carrots, beans, like green beans, uh, celery, tomatoes, broccoli, peppers, cucumbers, or also um, snap peas when the whole pod is eaten. And then some examples of the starchy vegetables that would belong in your carbohydrate or your grain portion of your plate is other beans like kidney, pinto, and black, um, as well as peas with, that you're eating without the pod, potatoes, and corn. So just remember, you can still eat those things to have a healthy, well-balanced diet. They would just go on the quarter of your plate instead of the half of your plate with fruits and vegetables. Theory, um, a little bit can add to your protein intake. So when we are choosing dairy for weight loss, we want to choose low fat dairy um, just to cut back on some calories. Uh, so things like unsweetened Greek yogurt um, that we can put some fruit in or, or, or Splenda flavors, things like that. Um, or also cottage cheese has protein in it. Um, and then we just want to limit cheese that's higher in saturated fat, like cheddar, American Swiss, and cream cheese. And we can still eat them, just keep the portion sizes smaller. And another thing to keep in mind about dairy is that a lot of them are more of a liquid consistency, which is going to be absorbed quicker um, than solid protein sources such as chickens or eggs. Um, so the more liquid protein sources are not going to keep us full longer as the solid ones. Fat is the last macronutrient. Fat gets a bad rap because it has a lot of calories in it, but it's really important in our diet still. It helps with the absorption of vitamins A, D, E, and K, as well as it's the main storage form of energy in the body. It helps with brain health, protects the organs, and one thing to keep in mind is that fat does have more calories than protein or carbohydrates. So we just want to choose healthy fats like olive oil, avocado oil, nuts and seeds, um, as well as fatty fish such as salmon. And a salmon is a great choice because it has both a high amount of protein and our healthy fats. So if you can choose fish about twice a week, then that will get us closer to having our healthy fats in our diet. Thinking about what we drink. We do want to get at least 64 ounces of sugar-free fluids per day. Uh, we want to li eliminate liquid calories in the diet since it doesn't provide fullness. And so most of the time we're going to just be adding on calories because we'll eat the same amount of solid food as we would have without the liquid calories um, since it does go through our stomachs faster. So a tip to drink more water is 
carrying a water bottle wherever you go, set time reminders on your phone. Uh, another strategy that people use is they mark lines on their water bottle with time goals. Uh, so say 10 o'clock and then 12 o'clock, um, and you can make sure that you drink enough by that line. Next, we'll talk about mindful eating. Mindful eating is really important to assess your fullness at each meal. And we wanna stay within that mindful eating zone. So you can see in gray, when we're slightly hungry, it's I'm beginning to think about food and I'm wanting to eat. So at that point, we should get up and go make our food because if we wait too long until we're more at the three range, I have a really strong urge to eat. We might actually make more food than what we intended to and we are more likely to overeat. So then while we're eating, we wanna pay attention with no distractions of what we're eating and pay attention to our body cues. So at the level six, it is satisfied. I'm aware that I'm no longer hungry and I feel totally satisfied. So you haven't quite gotten to that point where you're full. If I get, if I eat any more, I will be uncomfortable. We don't wanna to get to that point because that means that we've likely eaten too much. So as soon as you feel like you have satisfied the hunger, that is the point that you could stop eating for that meal. And it's okay to overeat sometimes. It's natural at holidays like Thanksgiving and things like that. Um, but for the most part on a day-to-day -day basis, we wanna practice listening to our bodies, especially after surgery, so we don't risk getting sick or stretching our new pouch. Here are some tips for mindful eating. Just think about why you're eating. Take your time and slow down. Think about what are you eating? What, if, what are you doing while you eat? So try to eliminate distractions like shutting off the TV or your phone and have a set schedule and eat meals at the table rather than the couch. Focus on the food and the taste of it, the smell of it, the color, everything. Just make food your main focus. Don't skip meals because we're more likely to overeat at the next one. And also try not to go more than four to five hours without eating. So you can do this with small snacks, one or two small snacks a day. Um, and then limit restaurants and carry out meals to about one or two times a week once a week preferably. And when you do go out to eat, still make healthy choices. And then just stay hydrated, especially between meals is gonna help um, keep us full between meals as well as decrease our cravings. A pre-op diet. We'll have a one week mostly liquid diet. So um, it this, Pre-op diet is really important because it helps shrink our liver size prior to surgery, which decreases your risk for complications during the surgery. So during this one week, we'll drink three to five servings of a liquid protein drink daily to total about 80 to 90 grams of protein. Try to look for drinks that are less than 200 calories and less than 15 grams of carbs. And in addition to those liquid protein drinks, you can have two servings of fruit or vegetables a day. A serving size is a cup, as well as make sure you're drinking a minimum of 64 ounces of sugar-free liquids per day. This is in addition to your liquid protein drink. So your protein shakes don't count as your water intake. You want to get the 64 ounces of the sugar-free water a day, which will also help decrease 
um, any headaches that you might get during this pre-op diet because if anybody has headaches during this diet, it's usually because they aren't drinking enough water. This just kind of gives you a sample day um, for the pre-op diet. You can kind of base your schedule off of this if you want to. Now let's go over a brief overview of the diet progression after surgery. You will meet with the dietitian um, right after your surgery and go over the diet progression much more in detail. But just so that you know what to expect, we'll go over it here. So the first one is liquids and each stage lasts two weeks. So after two weeks of full liquids, you'll go to pureed and then soft and regular. So remember, each stage should, should last two weeks long. It's very important not to advance your diet too quickly because we want to avoid any complications, as well as try to meet the protein and fluid goals at each stage that is on that chart in your packet. And so remember, the hospital dietitian will meet with you at Menora the day after your surgery to give you a more in-detailed look at each diet. Stage one is liquids. You'll have clear liquids while you're in the hospital, things like broth, sugar-free jello, sugar-free popsicles, Gatorade, things like that. Um, and then after a couple days, the doctors will tell you that you can advance to full liquids. So once you're tolerating the clear liquids, full liquids are okay. The full liquids are things like protein drinks, milk and soy milk, um, sugar-free pudding. You want to avoid fruit juices because they are really high in sugar and they can be absorbed too quickly and make us not feel good, as well as make us have more loose stools. So try to avoid um, drinks with a lot of sugar in it, including fruit juices. To make sure that we're getting in our fluid goals for the day, we want to take small sips slowly all throughout the day. Um, your goal for this stage is 45 grams of protein and 64 ounces of fluid. Every single stage that you'll be on, the goal is 64 ounces of fluid. So if you can try to drink one ounce every 10 to 15 minutes, this will help meet your goal. If you want to set a timer on your phone, um, or you can also think about it as drinking about four to six ounces an hour, then that should get you to 64 ounces of fluid per day. So now let's talk about stage two, which is pureed. This is about two weeks out from your surgery. On this stage, food must be blended with no chunks in it. It needs to be baby food consistency. And on this one, we don't want any meats or bread because they're a little too dry still. So try to avoid those. Um, you can still continue with your protein drink and taking small sips throughout the day to meet your goal of 45 to 60 grams of protein, um, as well as the 64 ounces of fluid as the last one stage three. This is soft foods, uh, at least four weeks out from surgery. So in this one, your food, of course, must be soft. And this is the stage that we now are going to start structuring our meals again and getting back into the habit of having three meals a day and one to two snacks. And this is also the time that you're going to start separating fluids from your meals, and your goal on this stage is 60 grams of protein and, again, 64 ounces of fluid. So on this stage, we really want to start focusing on adding your protein sources first, like baked or grilled fish, 
tofu and scrambled or hard boiled eggs. We want to avoid red meat um, and poultry unless it's canned. Uh, we want to avoid deli meat unless it is very, very thin. So paper thin deli meat like turkey um, and chicken deli meat. And then um, we want to avoid bread still, even though it's soft, it can still be too dry and sticky for our new system, um, as well as avoid raw fruits and vegetables. But you can try soft cooked non-starchy vegetables as well as canned soft fruit. Um, if you do go for canned fruit, make sure that it's in water or it's packed in its own 100% fruit juice, uh, but then drain the juice before eating it. No additional starches at this stage like bread or um, we don't want to add that in yet. At this stage, you're now having to chew. So just take tiny bites and chew well um, to the point of an applesauce consistency. Uh, some foods may not be tolerated yet, so just Make sure you try one new food at a time. Um, always chew it really well. Uh, and if you're not tolerating it yet, just avoid it until you feel ready to try it again in a week or so. Stage four is the bariatric regular diet. This is at least six weeks from surgery. You can add one new food at a time. Just make sure it's tolerated. Um, if you can't tolerate it yet, just try it again in another month. So we're still going to be focusing on a low calorie, high protein, low fat, low sugar. So our goal for this one is 60 to 80 grams of protein. However, if you're having the duodenal switch, your needs might be higher and we can go over that at your appointment with me on your, your specific individualized needs. Um, you can aim for about 900 to 1200 calories. Um, we'll also talk about that in your appointment on your calorie level and um, still have the 64 ounces of fluid a day. Just wanted to make a quick note about calories here. The 900 to 1200 calorie range may be too low uh, for you if you are someone who is say taller, more active or younger, or if you're male or female, everyone will have a different amount of calories needed for their body and activity level. So don't focus too much on counting calories after surgery, rather than just being mindful of foods that are calorie dense. After surgery, you're going to eat, be eating more lean proteins and vegetables that are, are already low in calorie. So as long as you're doing that and listening to your body by stopping whenever you're no longer hungry, you should lose weight without counting calories. What we do want you to count though is your grams of protein and ounces of water that you're consuming portions after surgery. With the bypass, you can begin with two tablespoons to a fourth of a cup each meal or snack. And yes, this is two tablespoons to a fourth of a cup per meal, not per food. That's how much that you want to begin for the entire meal. Um, some patients might say that after surgery, right after surgery, they don't feel their fullness cues right away. So we just want to take it slow and have those that really small portion at each meal so that we're not making ourselves sick and throwing it back up. So just start really slow. So the two tablespoons or fourth of a cup is for the bypass. And then the sleeve switch is you can begin with a fourth to a half of a cup each meal and snack. After surgery, we want to use a small plate still, um, such as a salad or appetizer or a kid's plate. And we want to stop at the very first sign of fullness. The right portion size is the amount of food required to make you feel satisfied, but not full. So let's kind of talk about 
um, how this changes from my plate. So remember my plate, it was half of your plate, fruits and vegetables. Now, after surgery, we're actually going to make it half of your plate protein. And that's because protein is so important for maintaining your muscle to keep your energy levels up and keep inflammation down and all those other functions of protein. So half of your plate will be protein. And this is what you'll eat first. So if you can have if you can eat half of your plate of protein, then you can move to your vegetables. And vegetables is going to make up a little more than half of your plate on that bottom side there, you can see. And then a little less than half of your plate can be your carbs or your non-starchy vegetables. So remember, eat protein first, then you can eat the vegetables. And then if you can eat both of those things, you can move on to your healthy whole grain carbs. Here's just a little better visual um, in the corner there for happier plate protein. And I just went over this with eating protein first, like fish, chicken, low-fat cheese, eggs, beans, or lentils. Um, don't forget fiber. So two-thirds of the rest of your plate is going to be your non-starchy vegetables. Try to eat the rainbow. Colorful options are good sources of antioxidants. And then limit your carbohydrates. Keep that in that smaller portion up there. Um, and choose whole grains. And as well as um, dressing and sauce, you can still use them, just keep it to a minimum at about a half of a teaspoon and choose the low fat or sugar free options. So let's talk about meal and snack ideas after surgery. In your packet, it has meal and snack ideas for after surgery, um, and it has good portion sizes um, for each type of surgery. You may not be able to tolerate these amounts. Uh, just kind of remember to stop at the first sign of fullness. Um, one thing to add more protein is adding unflavored protein powder to your foods, um, or you could add some different flavored protein powders as well, um, such as to your yogurt. So just continue to separate fluids from meals and keep track of your protein intake. And that will be important when you come in for your follow-up visits is to let us know how much protein you are taking in. Okay, so vitamin and mineral supplementation after surgery is very important. You'll start vitamin and minerals one week after surgery, and these are required for life. This is because bariatric surgery increases vitamin and mineral needs due to changes in your GI anatomy, such as rerouting, decreased stomach acid, etc., and um, also because you are decreasing your food intake so drastically that you may not be getting the full vitamin and mineral requirements that your body needs. Um, some deficiencies can't be reversed and can cause neurological damage. So it's really important to be proactive in preventing deficiencies. We will monitor your labs after surgery um, just to keep track. And if there's anything that becomes deficient, we'll give you extra supplementation. So we will help you monitor them. Choose chewable or liquid form, um, not gummies since they're not absorbed as well for at least the first six months post-op and then you can go ahead and go to the capsules um, and your doctor will help you decide if you're ready to go towards the capsules either earlier or later. It just depends on you.
Well, here are some options of some multivitamins. You want to choose one with iron, preferably. Um, you'll start taking these, as I said, one week after surgery. Uh, just check the label for serving size. Most are more than one per day, but there are options, um, as you can see on the right, for the bypass sleeve and the GJJ surgeries. Uh, those are all one a day options. Um, there's so many out there. We can help you choose. If you don't choose one of those, you can talk to us. Um, and then, however, for the duodenal switch surgery, they have higher needs for A, D, E, and K vitamins. Um, so, those are some options for you on the left, uh, like the Bariatric Advantage Advanced Multi with um, vitamins E and A or the Bariatric Fusion. That one actually has um, calcium in those pills. Um, you would have to take them four times a day. There's chewables. And so we generally recommend that you don't take multivitamins over the counter because you would need to increase the dose to be at least 200% of the RDA. Um, you can see in your packet that there's a table um, on a page before this for each surgery what your requirement is. Uh, so you would wanna make sure that it meets those requirements. But we would generally recommend that you Stay away from that because the bariatric vitamins are going to decrease how many you actually take in the day. If you choose a multivitamin you and you would need more than one, it's, it's best to divide the doses, one in the morning, one in the evening for maximum absorption. Um, whereas if you take a bariatric one, they usually either just have you taking one a day or two a day, and they're already separated out into the correct dosage for you. So try to take it with food except for dairy because it inhibits iron absorption. Taking it with food can help with absorption. Here is the complete slide without my picture on it so you can see what vitamins I was recommending. Calcium. Calcium is an important one to um, pay attention to. This needs to be taken separately from your iron multivitamins or just your regular iron supplement if you're taking it separately. Uh, we prefer calcium citrate because you don't have to take it with food. Calcium carbonate, you would need to take it with food. Um, so with calcium, take about 500 to 600 milligrams of calcium two to four times per day to equal the needs of your surgery. You can refer back to your needs in that table um, and don't take it more than that because we can only absorb about the 500 to 600 milligrams at a time so that's why we're separating it out in the day and the one of the most important things about calcium is that you need to take it two hours apart from your iron supplements otherwise it will inhibit the absorption another thing about calcium is that we want to take a chewable not the gummy because it's not absorbed as well um, and choose a chewable calcium citrate after the first month this just gives you kind of a sample daily dosing for um, your multivitamins and how you can separate it out through the day depending on um, if you're choosing the bariatric advantage multivitamin or the ProCare health multivitamin. About protein bars and shakes, they can be helpful for if you're on the go and you're not able to have a full sit down meal um, or, you know, protein powders 
are really helpful for adding more to the food that you're eating. Um, but let's talk about some specifics with each of them. So if you're going to choose a powder, try to choose whey isolate or, or whey concentrate for maximum absorption. Uh, you can mix it with water or unsweetened almond milk to make your own little protein shake. Um, you can have flavored or unflavored powders to add to food. And so with shakes, they can be used as a meal replacement, but we generally want you to choose solid protein when you're able since it is absorbed slower. Um, so shakes isn't going to keep us uh, full for as long. And then with bars, we just want to be cautious because they are high in calories and sugar. So with all of these powders, shakes, and bars, we want to choose items with 20 to 30 grams of protein and less than 5 grams of sugar. Here are some options of low sugar protein drinks. Uh, this is a picture of what I have in my nutrition consult room. Um, so most of these are pretty low in sugar. The Premier Protein Oats, those are an option to get more fiber, uh, especially if you're on the full liquid diet, if you want that to help regulate your stools, if you're having issues with constipation or diarrhea, um, those seven grams of fiber may help with that. And then um, Ensure has a plant-based protein one if you're a vegetarian. And then the one way on the right, the protein 2O, that's a protein water. That might be a good choice for when you're on the clear liquid diet for a few days or if you uh, can't tolerate the full liquids quite yet and it, they're too thick after surgery, um, then you could have protein water to help get you through. Um, until you can tolerate some of the protein shakes on the full liquid diet. So meal planning and prep, it really helps uh, when you plan now uh, to succeed later in the week. Meal planning really helps uh, make your week flow smoothly. And so you don't have to go crazy and make every single meal for the entire week on a Sunday or anything like that. But even doing simple things like cutting up some fruit and vegetables uh, the day before or a couple days before, um, then they're really easy to just grab for your next meal or snack um, instead of you're already hungry and you don't want to go through all of that prep of cutting vegetables and things things like that. Exercise. Exercise is really important both before and after surgery. If we start physical activity now, we can start building that habit um, that will set us up for success after surgery, as well as we can start building muscle. And muscle naturally helps decrease the amount of fat that we store in our body. And muscle burns more calories than fat. I'm sure you've heard that, but it really does help us with our overall weight loss. And so getting regular physical activity is so important. There's many benefits, like it helps you feel better, function better, um, and sleep better, and it reduces the risk of a large number of chronic diseases. And even short episodes that are at least 10 minutes of physical activity are beneficial to us. Here are the physical activity minimum recommendations for adults. Uh, so 30 minutes of moderate intensity five times a week for weight maintenance or 60 minutes of moderate intensity five times a week for weight loss and additional benefits 
such as preventing chronic diseases. So we might not be able to get here right away, uh, but we'll just work together to make our own goal based off of where, you're, where you are at right now. And we'll work up to our exercise and it will get easier as you lose weight after surgery as well. Here's what to expect before and after surgery. Just know you can start today. This will really help you be in, in the best possible shape for your surgery. The sooner you start, the better. Um, just start slow, walking five to 10 minutes at a time if you can. Um, and then immediately after your surgery, you will be walking in the hallways and this will prevent blood clots. Uh, and another thing that you can do to prevent blood clots is point and flex your feet every 15 to 30 minutes, as well as breathe deeply and cough every hour to expand your lung capacity, and this will help prevent pneumonia. And then during your post-op recovery, just do what's comfortable. Don't lift weights until a physician has cleared you. Just move as much as you can, as often as you can, even if that's just getting up from the couch, walking from one end of the house to and back, and just doing that once an hour. That's going to give you a more, a bigger advantage for recovering after your surgery and in your weight loss. This is just a review of some bariatric surgery guidelines. Plan on three small meals and one to two protein snacks. Start separating your fluid from your meals. So 30 minutes before your meals, you should stop drinking. And then 60 minutes after your meals, wait to start drinking again. Um, just cut food into small pieces and chew really well before swallowing. Try to get it to the point of an applesauce consistency. This will also help slow us down. And stop at the first sign of being satisfied. Avoid liquid calories. Watch your portion sizes. Um, and get protein and fiber at every meal. Two bites of protein to one bite of veggies. And there's more tips that you can kind of read through. All of this is in your packet. Uh, one thing that you can consider is to try tracking your meals on the Berry-tastic app, which is an app that is actually made for bariatric surgery patients. Um, you can scan your food and look at how many calories and protein you're getting in a day. Uh, My Fitness Pal does the same thing. It's just not for bariatric surgery patients specifically, um, or Lose It is another app that you can download. Um, if you just track your meals a few times a week and just kind of see where you're at, or if you have some off days and you want to kind of see um, what's going on uh, with your calorie and protein intake, that can be helpful. You don't need to track your calories every single day because that's not really sustainable um, to keep doing that for the rest of your life. But it's just a good tool to use to see where you are at. Also, another thing to consider is going to a support group. The number is in your packet. Uh, you can call Jennifer to get on the email list and we have seen that patients that go to support group are oftentimes more successful than those who don't. Here is a list of things that you can start doing right now. You can start tracking your protein intake to get 70 to 80 grams a day. Um, have a sm Start using a smaller plate, modeling my plate. Make your food and beverages low fat, sugar free or no sugar added. And the same goes with eliminating liquid calories since they are just adding on our calories in addition to the food we're already getting. Um, making a minimum of 64 ounces of fluid a day. Make your realistic physical activity goal. Uh, you can start planning your meals and meal prepping, just even if it's snacks and cutting up vegetables. Start structuring three meals and one to two high protein snacks each day. 
Make sure you're getting a protein source at every single meal and snack. And make sure you're slowing down, listening to your body, taking 20 to 30 minutes to finish each meal and stopping at that first sign that you've satisfied your hunger, not when you feel full. And then also go to support group because it can be really helpful to have that support in your weight loss journey, um, as well as make you more successful long term. At the end of your packet, you have a food journal. This is something that you can fill out at least one day to bring with you to your nutrition clearance appointment um, so I can get a better idea of what you are eating and drinking and we can make some specific goals for you that's more individualized, that will be really helpful. Um, so make sure you bring that with you to your appointment. Make sure you write down everything that you eat or drink and be as detailed as possible, how the food was prepared, the amount of food, um, where you ate it, whether that was like in front of the TV or, or the table, um, any kind of oils that you use and to cook the food and things like that. So then the last thing is an exercise log. Um, this is something that we can work together to make a specific goal for you. Or if you already kind of have an idea of what a good goal is for you, you can make your own. Um, you can bring this with you to um, an appointment with me or the doctors to see kind of where you're at with physical activity. And that will be helpful to um, make more goals for your weight loss. All right, well, that is the end of our class. Thank you so much for watching the whole thing. I know I threw a lot of information at you, but just write down any questions you might have and we can go over it at our next appointment or you can always call me with questions as well. I do want you to bring at least one day food log either in your packet or track it on an app like MyFitnessPal so we can look through it together and make some more individual individualized goals. All right, well, that's it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you. Bye.